Are you the one always shouting at the TV when there's an obvious clue a detector's missing? Can you piece together a big reveal before the book gets anywhere near it? Basically, do you like solving mysteries? Well, have we got a list of games for you. Any amateur sleuth who's played Cluedo knows it just doesn't cut it. We want real juicy mysteries. We want to piece together clues on a big whiteboard with pieces of red string and have a flip up notebook to fill with information. Well, board games have moved on a lot in the past few decades since the murder mysteries released. So you'll be pleased to know you can finally be the detective you've always dreamt of. Or if you've already solved a fair few tabletop mysteries and are looking for more, we've got a selection of games to really get you thinking. I'm Maddie from Dicebreaker, and these are seven modern detective board games that are much better than Cluedo. One of the first and the best detective games comes from the mythos of everyone's favourite fictional detective, Sherlock Holmes himself. In Consulting Detective, you and any number of friends will first spend some time going ooh at all the fun props in the box, but then delving into a complex and competently written mystery in the mysterious and dangerous streets of Victorian London. But you aren't going to be playing as Holmes and Watson themselves, of course. No, no, you are much too stupid for that, as the game is more than happy to remind you of any chance it gets. You instead will be playing Sherlock's ragtag group of street urchins, the Irregulars. As you use your unique three-foot perspective on the world to try and solve a box of ten chunky cases, even half as well as the legendary detective. With every case in the book, you'll receive a plush A4 book full of numbered prompts and illustrations, detailing every small detail of the mystery at hand, as well as a significant amount of red herrings to boot, with lovingly written prose recreating the shining streets and seedy underbelly of our great capital. With each of these prompts you read, you'll have spent more time on the case, reducing your final score at the end of each game. But those excerpts aren't just laid out, clearly labelled and accessible. Each prompt is instead tied to one of the hundreds of locations on your table centrepiece, this detailed map of London. Split into different regions, you'll need to search for the actual addresses of the places you wish to visit. Some of those addresses will be available from the start, but others will require careful sleuthery to find. You might need to search through the included directory book to find someone's surname and track them down, or search through the different businesses and landmarks that are listed at the back. Perhaps you'll find an interesting clue in browsing through the day's newspaper, complete with world events, local happenings, and peculiar advertisements. More likely though is that one lead will take you down a path of others as you chase the footprints of your culprit, always that one step ahead. Speaking of being steps ahead, once you feel like you've properly cracked the case and are ready to answer the booklet's questions to get your final score, which by the way will include some side mysteries to keep an eye on on the side, it's time to compare yourselves to Mr. Sherlock Holmes himself. Sherlock, I'm afraid, is more than just one step ahead of you, having completely solved the mystery in the most efficient way possible, as the amount of leads you investigated is compared to his absurdly low amount. I won't tell you which case or which box that case was in, but there is a mystery you can take on that, I kid you not, Sherlock solves without even leaving the bloody house because he's cracked it by reading the newspaper at home, which is stupid. If you want some really tricky mysteries to pull apart, or just have a humiliation kink, then Sherlock Consulting Detective is a perfect game for you and your group. My personal recommendation is the Green Box, the Baker Street Irregulars, which genuinely has some of the best board game writing I've ever read. In fact, you can watch my full review by clicking the card at the top of the screen right now. From the big sleep to LA Confidential, Los Angeles has served as the backdrop to countless crime thrillers and mystery stories, both real and imagined. Where better then to set a mystery board game? Detective City of Angels has players gumshoes walking the streets of LA during the 1940s at the height of noir and hard-boiled crime fiction, looking to solve a number of cases inspired by classics of the time. 
although players detectives might not be chasing the same cases and looking to bring those responsible to justice, they're also in it for their own glory, making this a competitive crime cracking experience compared to the fully co-op options we've mentioned before. To get ahead of their rivals, players can even deploy less scrupulous methods, even concealing evidence or spying on their opponents. To help dig into each case, the players will need to interrogate suspects and convince snitches to give up their secrets, sometimes at any cost. This is where the City of Angels' true masterstroke appears, in the form of the Chisel. The Chisel is a player who controls all of the suspects in the case, working to mislead, misdirect, and send the other players' detectives off the scent by providing different responses to questions. While they can't completely stop the detectives solving the mystery, the Chisel's job is to make the truth a true mystery to uncover. If you'd prefer to all work together, don't worry. City of Angels also includes a fully co-op sleuth mode. Like the classics it takes heavy inspiration from, City of Angels drips with atmosphere and theme. Players spend their turns traveling around Los Angeles on the game's massive map board, seeking out clues, exploring the less glitzy side of the city, dealing with some of its less savory characters, and walking the fine line between right and wrong. Its competitive edge and dynamic interrogations make Detective City of Angels something unique in the world of mystery board games, putting the interaction between players at the heart of its immersive tales and world. If you're a fan of classic crime thrillers from Hammett to Chandler, Hitchcock to Fincher, L.A. Noir to Disco Elysium, this board game could well be the next gripping mystery to suck you in. Grab a feathered hat, unsheath your sword, and don't drink the water. We're heading back in time for this entry. Mortem Medieval Detective is exactly what it says on the box, a sleuthing game set in the Middle Ages. No phone transcripts to read, no fingerprinting powder to use, just good old fashioned searching in a world of taverns and horse travel. The fun of Morton is that you can crack it open and instantly start playing. There aren't any instructions to read through, you learn by doing, so you'll be nosing around stables and forests in no time. There are three quests in the box, one of which we actually played in a stream, so you can get a flavour of the game by checking out that video. It was a curious missing persons case that ended up, well, I won't spoil the mystery. The three stories in the box all link together too, so you can chase one big mystery amongst all the other local ones, which really feels like a proper meaty quest. Morton works by heading to different locations on an ever-growing map and revealing cards depending on how you want to tackle the investigation once you get there. Perhaps you'll interrogate the innkeeper, or search the forest for clues, or most excitingly, raid a place. Oh yeah, you're not following any stuffy law here, you're medieval secret agents who may be rough but goddamn do you get results. You have various agents to pick from such as spies or warriors who each have different skills like surveillance or fighting. So you can use these skills to, if needs be, raid a location which ended up with me and Wheels taking hostages and ransacking a home in our playthrough. But we did discover some good clues, so it's all okay. Mortem can be enjoyed with one to six players, and we really enjoyed bouncing ideas off each other to solve mysteries, picking up on different clues, as well as doing silly voices for all the NPCs. Each case will take you a good couple of hours to work your way through, so it's definitely one for an afternoon of gaming or evening of sleuthing, as once you get stuck in, you won't want to stop till you've cracked the case. Or cracked a few heads together, at least. Enhance. Enhance. Enhance! Aha! Would you believe it, there's been a crime in a place called... Crime City! And it's up to you to work out what happened, but in Micro Macro Crime City, you'll only have one sense to rely on. Sight. 
Utilising this enormous poster sized map filled to the brim with fun and quirky illustrations of cute little characters doing quite horrible things to each other, you'll need to search for clues amongst the visual noise to help you answer questions and figure out what the heck is happening in Crime City's streets. After choosing a case, you'll pick between two difficulty levels, the beginner mode, which will have you moving through a series of prompts, gently guiding you to the answers, or expert mode, in which you'll be thrust into the world with an introduction and nothing else to go on before deciding you've seen enough and taking on the final exam. Some of the cases in Micro Macro are uh, pretty dark, including what a TikToker might describe as a serial unaliver who steals people's hair, so not every mission in the box might be appropriate for absolutely everyone around the table. Once you've got your mission, you'll head out in search of your first lead. You might know where a crime took place and search for that first. The hardware store, a marketplace, a museum. From there, you'll start your search outwards for something out of place. And you'll notice one of the strange quirks of Micro Macro's map and the reason it's such a clever design. You see, time in Crime City doesn't work quite in the same way that it does anywhere else. And this map is not a snapshot of a single moment in time, but instead a composite image of loads of little moments spread throughout the city. You might find your murderer running from the crime scene and be able to follow their path as they dump a bloody weapon in the trash cans down the street. But you can also then follow their path backwards to see where they came from before the crime. Maybe even spot their motivations or deduce if the crime was premeditated. The same is true for your victim. Where were they before they were killed? What happened to their body? At first, these paths are simple to follow in the easier cases to solve with nice cut and dry routes and motivations to follow. But as the cases get more complex and the events of your investigations become more tricky to pass, you'll need to adapt to the lack of intel and get smart quick. What happens if your perp disappears down into the subway or if a person of interest pops into a clothing store and comes out in a, an entirely different outfit? What if two people wearing the same obscuring hat and clothes branch off into two different paths? The answers are for you to find out, and Micro Macro can get pretty clever with the ways it leads you in the wrong direction. I will say that if you're very experienced with this kind of game, like, I don't know, me, uh, that you should definitely play the harder difficulty though. It's not the hardest detective game I've ever cracked, but with a truly unique design, there really is nothing else like Micro Macro Crime City out right now. What's the next logical step if you want to improve upon Cluedo? How about adding some actual social deduction to your murder mystery? Deception Murder in Hong Kong allows each of the players to step into the role of investigator by giving them the tools to hunt down the killer in amongst a bunch of innocents. Well, mostly innocents. Based in the city of Hong Kong, each player will take it in turns to try to locate the murder weapon for the case, along with the key evidence to tie it to the murder. As well as the obvious roles of investigator and killer, there are other identities that must be taken up in this thrilling hidden role game too. This may be a game that's similar to Cluedo in that you're trying to figure out the weapon used and the evidence. For example, Miss Scarlet with the candlestick in the billiard room, but the heart of the game lies in the roles everyone is given and how they are played. If you're randomly assigned the role of the forensic scientist, you are pretty much game master for that round. They must do their best to lead the other investigators to the correct set of evidence laid out in front of everyone. But this isn't as simple as it seems, as they can't speak, point, or generally cast suspicion upon anyone directly. What's fun about this game is that, unlike other hidden role games, where if you're identified as the antagonist, you're pretty much out of the game before you can say your piece, Deception allows the murderer to stay in the game regardless of whether or not the other investigator know their identity. It all falls down to whether or not the investigators have found the murder weapon and the key evidence. If there's no evidence, then the killer goes away scot-free. There are a few other roles that you can include if you have enough players. The witness and the accomplice. The witness starts the game with the knowledge of who the murderer is because, duh, they saw it happen. What they don't know is how the murder was carried out. This may seem like a huge advantage, but if the killer discovers the witness because they were being just a bit 
bit too obvious, they can win the game by pointing them out at the end. We mentioned earlier that the rest of the players were mostly innocent. That's because they can sometimes be an accomplice to the killer in the game. They know as much as the murderer does, and they can be a fantastic ally in throwing off the scent and figuring out the identity of the witness. Deception Murder in Hong Kong takes the best elements of the murder mystery board game and expands them to allow for a brand new sleuthing opportunity for you and your fellow investigators. Yes. Detective, a modern crime board game, is just a bit of a mouthful as a title, but it sums up this tech-enhanced successor to the likes of Consulting Detective neatly. Like the Sherlock Holmes game, Detective has players racing around a city in search of clues, but here they can also access a companion app on their real-life PC or tablet to examine pictures, text files, or other files in a police database. While a lot of detectives' action plays out on screen, it's still a board game. Players must manage their investigators' precious time as they travel between locations on a central board. Being careful not to waste hours following red herrings or risk taking on too much stress by working overtime. Although each case can last a few hours of real time, this means you're not likely to spend any of it wondering where to go next. Instead, it's a question of which path is right. The mix of board game time management, techie investigating, and good old-fashioned brain teasing makes Detective a potent mystery to solve. Although the writing can be a little iffy in spots, and the original game story takes some very unexpected turns for both better and worse, the excitement and satisfaction of having to trawl Wikipedia or hunt on Google Maps for real clues is as exciting as any mystery in any board game we've played. At its best, it really does feel like playing out an episode of CSI or a binge watch of the latest Netflix thriller on your table. The original detective offered a set of five connected mysteries that tied into a bigger plot and it's been followed since by a number of spin-offs, from the more compact Detective Season 1 to expansions that take the original game to 70s Boston and 80s Los Angeles. If you prefer something a little less real, Detective has also been taken to the sci-fi universe of Dune in Health Secrets, where investigating crimes is swapped for political machinations, and the comic book streets of Gotham City and Batman Everybody Lies. Whichever of the detective games fits your fancy, the blend of board game, mobile app, and classic puzzling remains a delight. That name might be wordy, but it's true. Detective is a worthy modern successor to Consulting Detective, and one of the best mystery board games you can play today. what is by far the most digital game on the list, I'm just going to warn you now that if you're not a fan of board games with apps, then this is not the game for you. Following your average detective board game formula with the players using interviews, crime scenes and pieces of evidence to unweave a twisted web and crack a complex case, Chronicles of Crime presents an interesting twist to not what you'll be experiencing, but how instead. After downloading an app that will run on pretty much any modern smartphone, provided your camera is still working, you'll begin to set up the board using the game's instructions and notice that there's not a whole lot of text to be read from from the content in the box. That's because pretty much everything in Chronicles of Crime is handled by your mobile app. Cards have QR codes that can be scanned to interrogate a perp, investigate a piece of evidence, or sweep a crime scene for clues. Instead of reading from heavy tomes of text entries or managing hundreds of cards with a crap ton of text on each, you'll be tapping through what looks like a visual novel after pairing certain cards together. Scanning those QR codes will allow you to travel from location to location and speak with the suspects there to gather information. You might then scan the QR code of an object, like for example a knife, to see what that suspect has to say about it. Not all characters are going to have something to say about every piece of evidence though, so you'll have to be careful about who you approach with your investigations, so as not to waste the precious time you have to make your case. 
In need of some more clues? Well, when scanning the QR codes of crime scenes, you'll be taken into one of Chronicles of Crime's more impressive features as you use your phone or tablet like a looking glass into a full 3D panorama of the locale, searching for relevant objects that you can announce to your fellow players who will find matching cards that you can investigate further. Important documents, bloodstains, murder weapons, anything out of place that might lead you to the next vital pin on your metaphorical red string laden corkboard. For those that have truly jumped off the deep end when it comes to app integration in board games, there's no better way to flex your phone's processing power while solving some tricky cases against the clock than cracking open Chronicles of Crime. Just be careful not to create your own crime scene when your face is glued to your phone and there's freshly topped up glasses of drink sitting on the edge of your table. Not that I would know anything about that, of course. <clears throat> So those were seven modern detective games that you should reach for the next time someone tries to crack out Cluedo. Which mystery are you going to solve first? Are you going it alone or sleuthing with friends? For more great board game recommendations, be sure to subscribe to the Dice Breaking YouTube channel, the channel you're already watching, where you'll find even more on tabletop gaming, from RPG actual plays to painting miniatures and everything in between. You can also head on over to dicebreaker.com for news and articles on even more in the tabletop world. If you have any other detective games to recommend, let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed, give this video a like. But most importantly, we'll see you next time and have a lovely day.